Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Now today we're going to be talking about data analysis and we're going to be looking at what I like to refer to as the data trifecta. It is the three views of data that allow you to be able to get as close as you can to finding improvement in your lap time in the easiest possible way. Now this should work in any kind of analysis software, but today we're going to be using Race Studio 3 analysis and really starting to dig into some core aspects such as what's happening on track, where is the time gained or lost? Why is it happening? What is the driver doing to be able to do this? And where exactly on track is this happening? This will allow us to be able to start looking at how to find simple improvements from anyone who has a GPS device based solution like an AIM Solo, all the way through to somebody who has a very advanced and elaborate setup. And so without further ado, let's get into the analysis. Right, let's configure the software so that we can actually analyze the data trifecta and really start to understand what's happening with our driving. Now I'm going to be using Race Studio 3 analysis and data from an AIM Solo 2, which hopefully will demonstrate that regardless of what particular device you have, this analysis is going to be applicable to absolutely everybody. Now, depending on the software you're using, you may be thinking, well, I don't necessarily have this. And so mimic whatever you can in terms of this setup with the software you're using. For anyone who is an AIM user, what I will do is I will make sure that you have access to this particular file so that you can follow along as we analyze the data in a later video where we look at data analysis. Now I'm in Race Studio 3 analysis here and we're going to be looking at some files and some data. This is from Portland where I knew we were running a Solo 2 and I'm just going to load up a file. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be presented with a profile view. Now this is going to vary person to person, depending on how much you've used the software before. And if you're not an AIM user, this may look completely different to you uh, overall. And so for all AIM users, let's make sure we can configure this into the three areas that we want to focus on. The first is the measures graph, which is often referred to as time distance in the new software. The second is we're going to be looking at a track map so we can understand where on track this activity is happening. And then the third thing we're going to have a look at is the split times report so we can see is this happening consistently and is this something that we can improve upon to be able to find those overall lap times. And so let's get into that. Now this view is um, uh, default um, and so let's start out first by adding in the three additional areas that we want. The first is the split times which you'll find down here and the next is the track map. As, simply as, it, as simple as it is, that's where we want to be able to go with the setups. Ignore everything else that is here. We're just going to stick with these three views to be able to get the most out of what we're looking at. Now the next thing we need to be able to do is to configure it how we want. And so if I go into this time distance, there's a lot of information that's available here. Interestingly, a lot of people like to have this trifecta of view all on the same screen. And we can get into that in later videos as we think about configuring profile views. However, for the purposes of today's demonstration, I'm going to clean this up so we can have nice clean pages. First thing we're going to do, and anyone who's used Race Studio 3 analysis knows this, is if you click in a panel, uh, right click, you can go into layout panels and remove a panel. Again, it just takes it away. If you want to be able to add one, you click on right click, layout panels, and you click on add panel. And to the left, to the right, to the top or the bottom gives you the options. The next thing I'm going to do down here is I'm going to remove this is called the storyboard. I don't use it personally, a lot of people do, but for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to remove it. So this gives me a nice clean measures graph view that allows me to start understanding information lap by lap. So the next thing I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to get it into a format where we can start looking not only at what's happening in terms of speed, but also driver inputs. And so because this is GPS data, we really need to find something that mimics something like a throttle or a brake. And that's where we lean on things like GPS longitudinal and lateral. Longitudinal is my favorite for being able to mimic driver inputs because it helps understand forwards and backwards. And if I show you by clicking on this, you can see that when the GPS longitudinal line dips, that's deceleration. And when it goes back up, that's acceleration. And this allows us to be able to identify when someone's slowing down or when someone's speeding up. It's a great way of being able to analyze the data. The next thing we want to be able to have a look at is what about left and right? Left and right gives us a really good indication of are we leaning on the car enough and are we using the maximum amount of grip that's available in the corners? 
To do that, we're going to use GPS latitudinal acceleration. So if I click here, we can now see that as we go through the corners, as we go in this instance through a right-hand corner, this is the indication as a plus, and as we go through a left-hand corner, this is the indication as a minus. But this helps us understand the g-forces on a left or right, or the lateral forces, I should describe. Now what we can start seeing is we can start seeing what's happening with the vehicle and what it's actually doing as relates to speed on track. So this is the view we want. We don't want to add anything else to this. We don't want to make it more complicated. But one of the things we do want to do is we want to be able to make sure that we can understand um, aspects of lap versus lap. So to do that, we're just going to click up here to laps and we're going to select a second lap. So let's find one. Let's just click on this one here. Now it's shown up as green. I can actually go in and change this color. I actually like uh, red and blue, but you can do any of these by clicking on it. And this is the view that you'll be able to see. Now, one of the things is that we can now see what's happening in terms of speed. We can see that speed is coming down in both. We can see what's happening with the red and the blue lap. We can see that the blue lap actually um, decelerated a little bit sooner than the red lap. Um, and we can see that all the way through each of the different aspects of the lap from start to finish as we do comparison. Now by clicking on a lap, what we've also added is something called the time compare bar. And this will compare performance against one of the two laps. And that means you've got to set a reference. Now by default, the reference lap, the one that is actually used to be able to compare, is often the best lap. And you can see that because there's a little eye icon here. However, if you did want to compare um, the slower lap, you can click there. What this does is it just changes the view. But if we're looking at red as the fastest lap, where the blue lap is above, that means it's slower. If the blue lap happens to dip below the red lap, that means at that particular point, the blue lap in this instance is faster. Now to be able to give you an idea of how we'd use this, and we're going to get into the analysis as we go to the next video, what we do in this instance is now we've got a really clear indication of a few key aspects that allow us to analyze the data. The first is where is the biggest area where one lap is losing or gaining over another. And so I don't necessarily need to point that out much here. This is the biggest area as we come into this last section of the corner. The delta that exists between the fastest lap and the blue lap, which is the slower lap, is actually growing considerably. You can see that being relatively even going into the corner and then significant coming out. So the next question is, why is that actually happening? Well, we can see that from a speed point of view, we can see that the red lap continues to carry that speed down the straight and the blue lap decelerates sooner as we're going through that corner. Now the next question is going to be, well, can we see that necessarily in what's happening with the actual driver inputs as well? And of course we can. We can see that here, for example, because we can see that if this is an indication of deceleration, this blue lap decelerates earlier in the lap than the red lap. And from that particular point, the blue lap struggles to be able to gain that time back against the red lap, in fact, continues to lose it um, further down the actual lap itself. Now, one of the things that I'm very lucky to have done is to driven this track many, many times. But this does open up the next part of the question that we need to be able to ask, which is where on track is this happening? Now, I know that this is 10, 11, 12 at Portland, just happened to have driven it many, many times. However, this is where the track map comes in very helpful and I can actually slide this one over. Here we can see that if we start looking at where is this happening on track, we can zoom in here and we can start seeing what's happening. Now in this particular instance, we can see that the blue lap actually has um, an interesting line through that corner compared to the red lap, which has a slightly different line and probably makes this a little bit of a shorter lap going through. And so if we look, we can see that the red lap carries the speed further into the corner Let's scroll in and have a look. And we can see that information as we go through and we can see maybe a different line, a different approach is having impact. Now we will analyze this in more detail as we go into the next video. But this just gives you an idea of now we've identified what happened, why did it happen, what was the driver doing to be able to make that happen and where on track and was there another influence or factor? Now, if we had things like smarty cams and cameras, we could potentially get into details as to was there another car on track? were we overtaking? 
In this instance, we were at a race called a Lucky Dog race, where I believe there were 80 plus cars on track. And so there was never really the concept of a clean lap. And so this might have been finding the best time through traffic, but at least it allows us to start understanding from the data what's happening on track. Now, the last aspect to this is being able to understand um, aspects such as, okay, well, one lap comparison isn't always the best way of being able to look at that. And so when we get into the analysis, we're going to look at concepts such as noise and being able to find consistency. But the split times report, which is the third and final component that we added, is starting to look at the track in multiple different segments. So you can start saying, okay, well, that may have been an anomaly and everywhere else I'm consistent in terms of performance through that particular corner. Plus, what it also allows you to do is to be able to say without any improvement necessarily in your driving, but just driving more consistently through each parts of the track, you can actually find a more realistic lap time. And so in this instance, you can see that a 132.4 was made up as the best lap through all of these different sectors. However, if we pick together the best of all of these, we can actually find ourselves with the best theoretical lap of a 131.4. And so this just gives us a different view and a different way of being able to look at that. And it also gives us a nice way of looking at to that particular section in different areas. So if we look here, we can see different elements of line. We can see the consistency. A lot of these don't always make a lot of sense. And so we can turn them on and off as we need to. You can click on hide or just add those to this particular area. And again, this becomes part of your personal preference. But again, what we've set up here is a way of being able to understand the last part of the analysis, which is, well, what happened, which is down here. The second is, why did it happen? Well, red lap carried more speed than the blue lap. Was there anything to do with what the driver was doing? Well, the blue lap shows that the driver decelerated sooner than the red lap in this particular area, and with a lot more force it might add going into that corner as well. Now that might indicate that they were following a car through there another aspect of being able to look at it. We only always wanted to get into analysis in each of these videos. Then we've also got an idea in terms of where that's happening on track, and we can have a look at that aspect. And then the last thing we've got is looking at the aspect of consistency through those corners. Now, before we close out on this video, there are a few things that I wanna be able to focus on as well that are what I would refer to as key components of setting up this view. And actually on this page is one of the most important aspects. What AIM generally tends to do is when they set up a segment, each of these, it's indicative of is it a right-hand turn, a left-hand turn, or a straight. This is no better indicated as we look at the actual measures graph. And here we can see that as you're going down the straight, this is a straight. Then we get into uh, a right-hand turn, a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn, a straight, a right-hand turn, a left-hand turn, a right-hand turn, a straight, and so forth but it's broken the track into many, many different sectors. Now, this is an interesting variable because nobody can remember exactly what sector number eight means. And so one of the things that I like to do is to make this more manageable. And so as I send you over necessarily the files, one of the things that we may want to have a look at is also making sure that we have aspects of the track map. Now, up here in the top right-hand side, and again, we're getting into some more advanced sort of aspects of this. There are tutorials, which I will link to that allow you to be able to potentially change this. But if you click up here, there's something here called track map and segment selector. And this allows you to be able to create new track maps uh, based upon segments. Now I've done this earlier and it was called a Lucky Dog Racing League segment. And if I set that up, I've broken the track into fewer segments which are more manageable. If I click on exit now, you can see I've now broken it down into sector one or straight one, turns one to three, turns four to six, turn seven, straight three, turns 10 to 12 and straight four. And so in this instance, what we've been able to do is to be able to make fewer segments to make analysis easier to work on. So we can start working on it and saying, are there areas where we wanna work on consistency? Let's say for example, in turn 10, 11, 12. Now when I go back to 10, 11 and 12, we can now see that there are different aspects here of performance, it's much easier to handle, and it's also changed the best theoretical from 131.4 to 131.8. So still time to be found, but in manageable chunks that can be worked through. So this is a very important factor as you're setting up your personal view at the track you're looking at is to be able to make sure you can manage that. The other key aspect is when you do select a sector, in this instance, turn seven, 
which is one of the most important corners at the Portland International Raceway, what it'll also do is it will change the track map and zoom in on that particular area and it will change the time distance to zoom in just on that particular corner as well. If you want to zoom out, getting used to the navigation controls on the software is really useful or whatever software you're using to be able to look at. But that's as far as I want to go in this particular tutorial. We're going to get into the next one where we're going to start looking at the analysis of data and being able to look at performance. But for the time being, what we want to be able to do is to set up a measures view where we can see what's happening on track, the actual speed variables, the driver inputs. We want to see where it's happening on track in terms of line and then associating that line with the actual track map itself. And then finally, what we can do is we can go in and we can look at a split times report to be able to understand what works. The last thing I'm going to say before I end this tutorial is it's very, very important at this particular point to be able to save your progress. I have done so many variations of profiles, forgotten to save them, loaded up a file at the track and I've lost where I was and had to recreate. So my only advice to you is to click up here, click on save profile as and name it whatever you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here and save profile because I've saved this as the data trifecta, the three views that you need to be able to get the best data analysis. And then this will be available for everyone to be able to use. It just leaves me to be able to say thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Look out for the second part of this, which is going to be looking at the data analysis component of this particular data. And with that, I'll just say if you want to be able to give this a like, a subscribe or a comment, is there a view you like? Is there something that you do differently? One of the things that I'm always torn between here is do I have the track map on the time distance to be able to see it all on one page? The AIM software allows you to do this. And so think about what works for you and maybe comment at the bottom if others want to be able to join in the conversation. And again, thank you very much.